Who doesn't love themselves some really good, delicious cold cuts of meat? Well, we're in front of Costco and we're gonna go inside and we are going to find the best and worst cuts of meat when it comes down to deli meat and cured meats. It's important that you know which ones to pick. Some of them have one or two simple ingredients that can completely throw things off. And others may seem like they aren't too good, but when you break them down, they're actually the best ones. So we'll make this one quick. We'll head into Costco and we will investigate cured meats, salamis, hams, turkey, chicken, you name it. Let's have some fun. I'm gonna go this way this time, something different. Fun fact, when you're walking through Costco and you're starting your shopping, walk through the speaker aisle and let the tune of whatever music is playing dictate your shopping experience. Just kidding. So I used to always eat at Subway. It was kind of my corporate go-to. So whenever I would have my lunch break, I would typically either go to Jack in the Box or I would go to Subway and I would just get a typical turkey sandwich. Even when I was thinking that I was healthy, I was eating that. So I was close to 300 pounds at one point. And yeah, Subway was a big go-to for me. And old habits die hard. I love myself some deli meat. So that's exactly why I'm doing this video because I know there's people out there that are trying to eat healthy, trying to do keto, trying to do low carb, and they just don't know what exactly they should eat. It seems like deli meat would be healthy. It seems like it'd be perfect. It's lean, clean protein, but there's things that are in it that completely throw it a loop. So that's why we're doing this video. So just a quick shout out to Thrive Market. In case you haven't seen my channel before, they are a big supporter, but Thrive Market is an online grocery store. So they are a member-based grocery store, so they deliver groceries, your pantry staples, all kinds of things right to your doorstep. It's super easy because if you're doing things like keto or anything like that, you can sort by diet. And it just makes it so convenient and so easy to be able to find exactly what you want and then get it delivered right to your doorstep. So highly, highly recommend them. And they're usually less expensive than most grocery stores. So anyhow, highly recommend them. Get your groceries delivered to your doorstep. Special link, special access down below in the description for after this video. First things first, let's take a look at some of this uncured black forest ham. And I'll show you what's in it and see if it's a good find. Kind of looks like roast beef when you first glance at it, but it's the Kirkland uncured black forest ham for $5.49 a pound, which is a pretty good price. So what is in it? We have pork, water. We have less than 2% of cane sugar, sea salt, vinegar, natural flavoring, including celery powder, and coated with natural flavoring. Okay, so the natural flavor within the meat itself not great, but not the worst. But the fact that they coat it with a natural flavoring, let me show you something. Look at how thick that is. That is thickly coated with a flavoring. That is going to be such a high concentration of natural flavors. I would highly, highly recommend that we do not get this one. The other thing, be cautious of when it says no nitrites or nitrates added because it doesn't always mean what you think it means. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Cool enough, just ran into a guy that watched our Dollar Tree video and said, hey man, I recognize you. I thought I recognized that store uh, as the one here in our local town. Anyhow, fun, always nice to see that. He said that videos have helped him a lot. Anyhow, now let's talk about uh, pastrami for a second. Uncured versus cured. Okay, so really not too big of a deal as long as you know what to look for but let's talk about pastrami for one second so this one we're looking at the columbus brand which is a lot more expensive too 8.99 a pound for uncured pastrami and we have here we have beef water and then salt sea salt brown sugar natural flavorings cultured gel celery juice powder what they do with the celery juice powder is that is how they get by without having any nitrites or nitrates added because it means they're not adding synthetic nitrites, but what they're doing is they're utilizing nitrites and nitrates that come naturally from celery. Is that something that's bad or is it okay? Well, it's kind of neither because what they do is if they brine it in celery, the natural nitrites and nitrates is totally fine. Those are fine because that's the amount that you would get in some celery juice. But what they can do is they can take the nitrites and the nitrates and concentrate them out of celery and that's a little bit of a different story because anything in concentration like that could potentially be bad. So we have to be a little bit careful with that. So if it says celery juice, it's one thing. Or if it says celery, it's another thing. Or if it says nitrites or nitrates from celery, then it's a little bit different. You have to be a little bit cautious with it because it's just kind of semantics a little bit. In other words, there were some studies, one study in particular, that demonstrated that there were the same amount of nitrites and nitrates in no nitrite, nitrate added meat as there were in the ones that did actually have synthetic nitrites and nitrates added. It just all depends on where you're getting it from, right? Again, don't be overly concerned with it. 
So pastrami is not necessarily the best one because it's usually pretty adulterated by itself. Uh, the fact this one's uncured is a little bit better. They still have a bunch of those natural flavors in it, but there's one other thing I want you to be careful of, and this is gonna apply for a lot of the videos that we do and a lot of the topics and the foods that we talk about today. Have you ever heard of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons before? I doubt you have, but I have, and let me share what that means. So polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, aromatic, smell, right? Well, this is naturally smoked. Smoking meats is not always the worst, but when you smoke meats that are highly processed to begin with, you end up running into that issue, which is those aromatic hydrocarbons, right? So what does that do inside your body? Well, there's some studies that show that these polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons can have an effect on various gastrointestinal cancers, but I don't really wanna go that route. The other thing is the endocrine system. Okay, so there are some studies that demonstrate that it can have an effect on fertility. Now, different woods are gonna be different. So like uh, hazel, plum, things like that are usually a little bit worse. It all depends really, again, it kind of gets down to the granular, how detailed do you want to get. I would just generally recommend if you're going to smoke your meat, smoke your meat yourself and smoke it with cherry wood. Cherry wood seems to have the least effect with those uh, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. When you're looking at like these processed meats, it's all going to be bad. So try to avoid the non-smoked flavor. And sometimes it's subtle. So look very carefully. Like the pastrami, it was pretty subtle in there. What about when we get to like the uncured hams? Do we have anything we need to know here? Let's see. Still the same kind of Columbus brand. No nitrites and nitrates added. Not too worried about looking at that this time. Let's see what's in it. So here we have ham, water, brown sugar, sea salt, dextrose, sodium phosphate, cultured celery juice powder. This one's not bad. It does have a 10% seasoning solution. And what does that really mean though? Well, they're mainly talking about the sodium phosphate. Sodium phosphate is used as a water binding agent. So it's drawing water in. But another thing that it does is it chelates iron, it chelates copper, it chelates the minerals that might cause oxidation. So it basically makes the meat last a little bit longer. But what is wrong with consuming something that's chelated in high amounts? Well, the chelation process is going to also cause chelation or binding of minerals in your gut too. So let's say you're eating really healthy foods, really healthy minerals, and then all of a sudden you consume a bunch of this processed meat that has a bunch of sodium phosphate in it. Well, it turns out the minerals that you're consuming along with it are not really going to get absorbed because they're getting chelated and passed through the gut. So I highly recommend that we avoid sodium phosphate when we can, at least when it's coupled with highly nutritious food. If you were just going to have a piece of this meat randomly, I feel like it would be okay. So this Columbus uncured applewood smoked ham, aside from the brown sugar, is okay on its own, maybe with a little bit of cheese or something, but not with a salad where you're trying to actually absorb the nutrients too. As far as the meats are concerned, ham is halfway decent. Uh, pastrami is still gonna be coming from beef more or less. Um, and then when we also get into, let's see, some of this other uncured pastrami, yes and then the black forest ham. I would usually try to lean towards a pork because it can usually be a little bit cleaner as far as the fat profile goes. Turkey is usually very antibiotic ridden, which I'm a little bit skeptical of. That being said, before we move into like the salamis and the other kinds of cured meats per se, the actual cured meats, let's look at turkey breast here, this Plainville Farms one. This is one of my favorite ones. Okay, so this is what I love. No nitrates or nitrites added except naturally occurring in sea salt. So they're not concentrating things trying to manipulate this never ever given antibiotics, not just never, but never ever, which is really good. Organic non-GMO vegetarian diet fed, that's always a plus, no added hormones or growth hormones, humanely raised and free range, gluten-free and casein-free. Talk about clean, and then we look at the actual ingredients and it's even better. Organic turkey breast, water, and sea salt. It does not get any cleaner than that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a dang good, I would give this to my son and feel good about it. Here's the caveat. $8.27 per pound. Okay, $13.99 for a unit. That is steep, but in my opinion, it's worth it just because it is so clean. And my son is gonna be the one that mainly eats deli meat in this case. And I'm gonna make sure that I give him the best that I possibly can. And this is worth it. I just will try not to indulge in it so I don't waste the money feeding my big galoot self. Then we get into like the uncured Canadian bacon. Let's take a look at that real quick. Got this one, this maple leaf brand. 18% seasoning solution. Okay, that's a lot. That means that most of this is gonna be salt water. Yeah, you can tell by the sodium content, 470 milligrams. 
Don't be too worried about sodium on keto though, because that sodium is going to help your body stay hydrated even when the kidneys are expelling that extra water during a low carb diet. Pork, water, vinegar, sea salt, cane sugar, cultured celery extract, and spice extract. The spice extract could very well be something like rosemary. Let me tell you something that they do with like rosemary, oregano, some of these other spices. Sometimes you will find that uh, ham companies, turkey companies, they'll say it's rosemary flavored or it has rosemary in it. That's way, their way of naturally adding an antimicrobial or antioxidant. It's a good thing. It's better than using a synthetic version, but concentrated amounts of rosemary can do that. They can have an antioxidant effect to protect the meat. So when you see a spice extract or a spice concentrate, it's probably something like that. That's generally what they're doing is putting as natural of a way of putting an antioxidant in there as they possibly can. So that one's halfway decent considering that some of the uncured Canadian bacon that I've seen at like Safeway and other stores can be a little bit sketch. So not bad. Organic oven roasted turkey breast. Um, and how does it compare to this other one? Well, we've got organic turkey breast, water, and 2% or less of salt. Pretty darn clean. And price per pound, 434 per pound. Oops, I'm sorry, looking at that one. 90, uh, that's per ounce, 11.99. Let's see, 9.59 per ounce times 16. That's way more expensive. Okay, so you're not getting nearly as much bang for the buck with this one as you are with this one. You're just getting nice little independent packs there. So price-wise, eh, it's not really worth it, but it's still pretty darn clean. That's cool, just had another person come up to me and say that they enjoy my Costco videos. This is cool. It's nice that I'm doing more of these again. Uh, while everything was super locked down in California, it was really tough and I didn't feel right coming into Costco doing these videos. Um, now I combine them with when I'm doing my shopping. So I'm not making an extra trip and it just works out. And then I can come in here and I can do these videos, but I also get to interact with the people that love these videos so much. So huge thank you to you guys that come out and say hello and you know say hi to me when you see me in the store. In an effort to make this a little bit quicker, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna skip around over to like the salamis and things like that. I think we've already covered some really good ground on teaching you stuff here. So, so far, this Plainville Farms organic roasted turkey and also the Canadian bacon are great finds but I know there's some really good finds when it comes down to the salami and the hams over here. Here's something that I covered in another video, but I figure I just touch on it real quick. These ones kind of scare me. These fr fresh additions, chicken breast things, whatever they're called. Okay, we've got chicken, water, dehydrated chicken flavor, chicken broth, natural flavors, vinegar, potato starch, canola oil, rice starch, salt and spice. That's too many ingredients. Plus, they're adding canola oil in there and rice starch just to kind of fatten it up and flavor it up a little bit. Nah, I'm gonna pass. Hams here. All right. Well. Here's something that's kind of interesting about when you get a whole ham or you have them slice it off at the deli versus um, getting it already pre-sliced. A little something fun to know about this. There's two reasons why you usually want to have your butcher slice it up or get it in like a thicker cut. Uh, for one, a lot of studies demonstrate that there's less of the just harmful products in a whole cut versus stuff that's pre-packaged. The amount of preservatives they have to put into pre-packaged, pre-sliced stuff is much higher. The other piece is how it's cured, if they're curing individual slices and they're brining them with nitrites and nitrates, those individual slices, there's more surface area that's going to come in contact with those nitrites and nitrates. So if you can go to the butcher and have them slice it up, or you can get it in a full, well-rounded piece itself, you're gonna have less surface area that came in contact with those potential preservatives. So it just works out a little bit better. Plus you end up saving some money too. And right now it's right around the holiday time that I'm filming this. I know you might be watching this at any time, so we have a lot of whole cuts here to look at. So let's take a look. So we have 329 per pound for Kirkland Signature Master Carb Half Ham. Very curious what's in this. It says ready to eat. I'm just gonna dive right in. Um, we have pork, water, dextrose, potassium lactate, ooh, no thanks. Salt, sodium phosphate again, sodium diacetate, sodium erythrobate, and sodium nitrite. So they have synthetic nitrites in there and the erythrobate and the diacetate and the phosphate. So in this case, it's not a good go. Um, what's funny is we might even have a better result getting a spiral ham, which would be wild, but you never know. Ingredients are buried under this netting, so I can't really do anything about that. However, I did notice one thing. It comes with a glaze packet, and it's gluten-free. No antibiotics ever, so that's pretty clean for a spiral ham. Let me explain something about ham in just a second. I'm going to get out of some people's way. But the cool thing is, is you don't have to have the honey glaze on that. You can have it without the honey glaze. It's different than a honey baked ham. You see, it's just got a glaze with it. Now, ham in general is usually the way to go. And it looks like some of the things might have been pulled off the shelf in an effort to make room for Thanksgiving stuff. But ham is usually 
only going to be at worst sodium phosphate if you're getting good quality stuff and usually just salt and ham otherwise that's why i usually recommend going with like a prosciutto or a parma ham over a salami let me see if i can find some to show you well here's some salamis i can at least show you what's going on here i wish they had like the prosciuttos and the hams to be able to show you side by side so Genoa salami, just kind of standard salami. We have pork, salt, dextrose, spices, lactic acid, starter culture. Don't worry about a starter culture. That's not too big of a deal. Sodium erythrobate, uh, potassium nitrate, garlic, and sodium nitrate. So lots of synthetic nitrites and nitrates, which are demonstrated to be carcinogens, especially when they're in a synthetic mode. Wow, that one looks a little brown. That one shouldn't be, ooh, that one's not looking too great there. Compared to that, red, brown, red, brown. Anyhow. Now let's look at this Columbus salami. Is salami usually a bad? Like this one is reduced sodium Italian dry. Okay, so it's less sodium. Does that make it better? Let's find out. We have pork, non-fat dry milk. That's interesting. Salt, sugar, corn syrup, potassium chloride, wine, spices, garlic powders, lactic acid, starter culture, sodium. Yeah, this has got a bunch of weird things in it. Plus it has some dairy added in there to try to give it more body. They do that uh, to also help culture and help cure it sometimes. Now, granted, there's less sodium. You'd be better off to go with a higher salt one that's a little bit cleaner. This one doesn't have. Or this one has way more stuff in the reduced sodium than it does in the not reduced sodium. If you had to ask me, I would much rather have the salt because the salt is going to clear out of your system in a day. <laughs> the stuff that's in here might take a heck of a lot longer. So, kind of interesting. Now, what's the price difference? Six ninety nine, four point six dollars per pound versus, hey, what do you know? Six ninety nine a pound. So it's actually more expensive per pound to get the stuff that's not as good because they say, hey, it's reduced sodium, so it's healthier. Whereas the Genoa salami is a higher quality cut, gluten-free, and seemingly much better. Ah, uh, cool, good news. I found the salami and I found the hams. They just moved into a different location. So it turns out you get a little bonus with this video. Because it's the holiday time, I was able to talk about hams too, whereas normally those wouldn't be there. And I still get to talk about the actual sliced ham and some of the other stuff. So let's take a look. They have some really good choices here at Costco. It makes me so happy. They've got these different charcuterie boards, these samplers. They've got some salami. They've got some Parma ham. I even saw some other really high quality ones before. Let me see if I can find them. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can find a, a better co ham because I feel like that's such a good one. Now, a quick note to know when you're eating high quality cured ham, if you're going to, if you're not someone that eats a lot of cured meats, but you want to splurge, uh, and if money isn't as much of an issue and you're not having them frequently, the longer, the slower, the better aged ham is going to be better. It's going to taste better because the slow drying process dries out a lot of the moisture. It ends up leaving a more intense flavor with less things having to be added. The slow drying process is expensive to do because obviously it takes space, takes inventory to get that done. So that makes it tough. I had to put the phone down because I just saw who looked like possibly a manager walking through here. And I don't want to get in trouble even though I'm putting people in a... Uh, putting Costco in a positive light, either way. So what that means is it takes a lot of space to dry out a lot of ham, and that means it's gonna drive the cost up. Let's take a look at what we have here. So here we have this Principe uh, Prosciutto de San Daniel, product of Italy, $23 a pound, $12.99, but it's probably real good quality stuff. And what do we have there? Hey, there you go, Italian pork leg and sea salt, lots of salt, Lots of sodium, but don't be worried about it on a low carb diet and actually relatively low fat. And the thing I also like about prosciutto is see those ribbons of fat? See, we have nice, clean ribbons of saturated fat, which means that it's a lot more stable and it probably handled the drying process better versus like various forms of fat. Like if you look at how the salami looks, it's a little bit different. You can see smaller ribbons of fat in there that are harder to get out. Um, and I can compare ingredients side by side here in just a second. Here's one that I pinpoint a lot in other videos. It's this uh, Parma, Prosciutto de Parma. It's a Parma ham and prosciutto side by side. Check it out, $15 a pound, which compare that to $23 a pound, it's gonna be cheaper even when it's not on sale. And right now it's on sale. So we have Parma ham. Let's see what we have. Look at this. Where's the ingredient? Oh yeah, wait, sorry. It's hard to see the ingredients because pork and salt. See, it's aged after opening, used within three days because it doesn't have a bunch of preservatives. Prosciutto and Parma ham are your go-tos. I highly recommend that you go that route. So we got this good San Daniel prosciutto and we got this Citerio Parma ham, which 
think is good stuff. Now we compare that again to some salami. Let's look at this. Let's find the one that says salami here. We've got prosciutto, Italian dry salami, and dry copa. <laughs> okay, sorry, that was, that was my blippy laugh. Yeah, those of you that have kids that watch Blippy, you know, he's a YouTuber that's like, does a bunch of kid stuff. Pork meat and salt in the prosciutto. Slow aged. And then we have the salami. Check it out. Oh, pork, salt, dextrose, natural flavorings, wine, sodium masturbate, lactic acid, starter culture, sodium. Pass on the salami, ladies and gents, unless you can get a clean one. And dry copa, which is pork, shoulder butt, salt, dextrose, spices, sodium erythrobate, garlic, and sodium nitrite. You know, at least it does not have sodium phosphate. It doesn't have the chelating agents in it. So that you kind of just see by list of ingredients here. First place on the prosciutto, second place on the copa, and third place on the Italian dry salami right there in front of us. Hey, but what if you're a fan of the big dry salamis, like the logs of them that aren't sliced? Well, first of all, just like I talked about the larger cuts of ham and stuff, if you can get it in a tube, in a log, it's going to be better. A full link of salami, that's gonna be better. Get more surface area or less surface area to be potentially sitting in a nasty brine or a nasty culture. Let's see what's in this one. So this I have the uh, Molinari, the whole dry salami, three pounds, $7 a pound, definitely a good price. It's beeping, hopefully you guys don't hear this. What's in this one? Pork, non-fat dry milk, salt, cane sugar, lactic acid, starter culture, so yeah, it's just as bad, it's just in a tube. We're gonna take one more spin really quick and just hit the, uh, like the smoked salmon and stuff like that really quick, and then we'll get out of your hair and let you get on with your day. Rotisserie chickens, hard to tell what's in them, so it's a little tough to be able to talk about that. All right, here we have the smoked salmons, the Norwegian salmon slices, and the hot smoked Norwegian salmon. Make your life really simple here. Uh, I don't see, oh yeah, and the smoked sockeye. That's the one that we want. We have smoked sockeye, we have Norwegian smoked salmon. The sockeye is higher in what is called astaxanthin. That's why it's so pink. Fun fact I'm gonna explain here in just a second. The long and the short of it is though, although it's a little bit more expensive at $18 per pound, I highly recommend that you go with the sockeye. It has a better taste, better antioxidant profile, and less potential chemicals and radiation. Did just come across a pretty cool find here. And I think this is a, like a Thanksgiving special kind of thing. Let me show you what I just stumbled across. It is this slice roasted turkey breast that has turkey breast, canola oil, and lemon juice in it. That's it alongside the parsley and seasonings. Uh, let me show you. Pound, that is a very good price. Uh, turkey breast, not necessarily organic, not antibiotic free. Uh, it does have canola oil in there, which kind of is a bummer. Lemon juice, but still, I wish it was expeller pressed, so sure, I could pick it apart on the canola oil, but this is pretty darn good. Actually, no, made turkey without antibiotics. So this is pretty clean, not bad. My voice just went really high pitched there. Kind of pulling that falsetto there, I don't know. But anyway, $6.99 a pound for this. I don't think it's a regular item, I think it's a roadshow item. Not something I would get all the time because I don't like to load myself with canola oil, but that's pretty darn clean in the grand scheme of things. One last thing that I found here, because uh, it's a perfect example of the larger chunks of meat that I talked about in turkey breast. Look at this. This would be a nice thing to get just, uh, again, to have along with Thanksgiving, maybe as a, an alternative to ham, you could have this. And that wouldn't be a bad idea, especially when you look at the ingredients, not bad. Turkey breast, turkey broth, and 2% less of sea salt and sugar. That is clean for $3.99 a pound. Oven brown turkey breast, 99% fat free, no antibiotics. I would get this instead of a ham. It just makes sense. Ham, you're gonna have all the other garbage in it and no one's gonna really know the difference unless they are really just wanting to be a pain in the arse. I just think that's a great little find. It just proves the point that it's a lot easier to get it in a full chunk like that than it is in the already sliced if you can. Plus it's a heck of a lot cheaper. Oh, we can't forget the big one, right? The big ham leg, that big sucker comes with the knife, comes with the stand for a hundred bucks. Okay, what the heck? Is it good? Preservative free? This is the big one. It's going on. I think you've probably seen it at Costco lately. What's it all about? Is it going to make the cut for a cured meat or deli meat? Is it going to make Thomas's list? Let's find out. Ingredients, pork, ham, and salt. That is a good deal. That is a really good deal. Wow. Spanish ham and Mediterranean sea salt only. Gluten-free, lactose-free, coloring-free, no added nitrates. No, this is so cool. Maybe refrigerated, but it doesn't have to be because it's actually sealed. What a tremendous find. I hope they carry this around for a little while. It might just be a holiday thing. 
but if you're seeing this while you still have it at your Costco's, I would recommend getting it because that is a good price. It's funny because when I was growing up, I was always taught that like the ham and things like that were like the worst ones, the least healthy, and you should go with the turkey, you should go with the chicken. Ham isn't good, pork isn't that good, bacon, it's bad. But then when we look at this and we see the hams and the prosciuttos, they're the cleanest by a long shot. Definitely recommend going that route. So as always, you have to remember, you have to think outside the box. What food industry wants you to know of as good is not always the case. So keep it locked in here on my channel so you can keep learning how to shop, but also learn the biochemistry of your body so you can make the right choices for you to be your best version of yourself. I'll see you tomorrow.